it's me again um Alice Chibombo Ekanya but this time I'm not representing the Wikimedia Community User Group in Uganda I am here in my capacity as a Wikimedia in residence and course facilitator for Aflia and uh, together with my colleagues we'll be talking about Wikidata for African librarians and they'll introduce themselves all good I'm George Fordrop from Wikimedia Cameroon. I was the um, curriculum uh, facilitator in the Francophone communities on these courses. Yeah, hello. My name is Jesse Asida Krufi, and I was part of the team. Yeah, so I was um, the assistant curriculum facilitator for this project, which was um, an impactful one to the African community. Next slide, please. All right, so we'd just like to give you a background of AFLIA and what led to the project. Uh, AFLIA is an acronym for the African Library and Information Associations and Institutions. It's, um, it's an umbrella organization with its inception in 2013. And um, it's an umbrella organization for very many information institutions in Africa, and it has at least 212 organizational members. And between the 212 organizational members, there are about a thousand information workers that are represented on the continent. And the word information workers is very deliberate. Very many people think it's only librarians. Archivists are our small cousins. Uh, then uh, there are also curators, as well as the people that operate in galleries. And um, one of the key areas of um, AFLIA's operation is to provide access to continuous professional development and networking opportunities with strategic partners through workshops, courses, and webinars. So these are the, this is the vision. And this is the mission. In case you also have access to the vision and mission of the Wikimedia Foundation, please compare this and see where they um, align, rather intersect. Next slide, please. So the course that we were contracted to work on in different capacities was promoting open knowledge practices. So what happened is we had already, as AFLIA, in conjunction with the Wikimedia Foundation, we had already run a successful, I like to think successful uh, course for Wikipedia in African libraries. And then towards the end, we also realized that there was Wikidata that had not been addressed. And yet very many people claimed to be working with databases. Very many people claimed to be working with structured data. So we were able to receive a grant from the Wikimedia Foundation and th that was the money and AFLIA had access to the network to the over a thousand people. So next slide, please. And uh, that grant led to us being hired. Abel is not here with us today. So um, Jesse and George, your roles. It's written. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm a curriculum development uh, facilitator for French francophone communities is what is to translate every document in French and also try to connect uh, participant francophone participant to the project. Yes. Yes. So for my role as a curriculum developer, I need to help my senior colleague here in you know structuring the course for the program, putting. Um, various layout on how to structure and um, various um, wiki and data informations concerning um, the the course curr curricula and also involving various communities that you know are interested in um, the engagement that we are trying to take because we are involving so many african countries who are into liberian activities or like engaging in activities related to libraries so as a team we need to you know structure draft various courses we had a plan we had a, um, our meta page we had um how do you call it 
we we had we had our meta page we also had you know we we did a lot of research around trying to you know gather various um um wiki data related activities related to librarians or information workers so we we kind of you know sat down within you know a month we had to get gather all those information and have a structured curricular course for the community with um affilia and i think everything has been drafted on um, our meta page we have we had a cohort one and a cohort two and i think the um, judges with abel did very well concerning the french community how the french community would be able to understand because sometimes you know that there is a gap relating to french activities but with judges and abel things went on well you know that's for the english community when you talk about english community activities we are kind of you know ahead of you know other communities yeah so we kind of did very well related to that thank you please all right so just one packet this is what we did as a team of four like i mentioned we were sponsored by the wikimedia foundation and the project was implemented uh, by aflia between november 2022 and september 2023 actually our second cohort graduated on the 31st of october and uh, what we came up with was a bilingual curriculum in both French and English. And this curriculum was spread over a six to seven week course. And it consisted of five sections with three contact hours per week. Uh, the first two modules were foundational, you know, mission alignment. Why are we here? Can we relate linked data to databases? And then the third and the fourth module were interacting with Wikidata. How do we add uh, uh, content to Wikidata? How do we query Wikidata? How do we build scholarly profiles? And then there was always an hour or two for the office hour and community discussions based on a customized curriculum. That is what we I was explaining. And then participants came from at least 40 countries in Africa. Some were from Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. I think in this last cohort, there were some people from South America. Please, next slide. So why did we do it? One, there were limited community connections. Again, we carried out a survey in September of 2022. We we did not, this time we did, deliberately did not poll our, our former students, but we asked a new batch of librarians who were still under AFLIA's network. We had around 350 respondents, and I'm glad to say that this time at least 49% did not know that there was a Wikimedia community within their communities. And then there was also continuity and responsibility for the number of the students that we had trained in previous courses, and I'm glad to see that they are here. And then there are also the growing relevance of structured data and national conversations on use and presentation of data and research. And librarians are not in this conversation, by the way. And also if, all right, so that is why we did it from a community perspective. But then there was also another uh, perspective that we looked at, no, the slide before that. Uh, there were knowledge gaps that were related to information professionals, researchers and research publications and information institutions from Africa on Wikidata. And with the knowledge gaps, there are also quality gaps. And then because we know that people respond to the language that they know professionally, um, Wikidata are very many information professionals. If you ask them to explain it, in the technical terms they use, they'll tell you this login is those are the terms that they know and relate with Wikidata. Ned, please. So after doing the contact as that for we had two cohorts and uh, the first cohort is the number in Africa, but we had how many 
he graduated. But next slide, please. And the cohort we had around 200 and students. You see, obviously, Antana is going to read her. Then going to, are going to persevere till the third section. And then towards the very in between the two, the two uh, language communities, these were the number of items that were created, 848 plus 365. And obviously, some references are added in order to improve the quality gaps. Cohort two, please. There. Uh, yeah. And then the second cohort came in. And uh, between 82 plus 25 editors, these were the items created. Next slide, please. So we could not begin assuming for the participants what it is that was missing, but we gave them an opportunity to look into Wikidata and identify from a very elementary point of view, what do you think is missing on Wikidata? Above is a screenshot that was taken from a Mentimeter poll. These are not all the responses, but you can see things like information on African cultural relics, artists and performers, boats, culinary arts, education, etc., etc., but when cohort one graduated, these are the topics that we observed that had been most addressed. If it was not adding references, it was adding images or adding new content altogether about information workers, beauty queen. Somebody actually created, um, I think, 10 items about beauty queens. And then politicians and constituencies, because very many of them were working in parliamentary libraries. And then we also had those who are working in conservation organizations, giving us buildings and monuments. And those who worked with the government gave us the professional associations and organizations. We move. Next slide. And then cohort two had a very, very different um the demographic of cohort two was very, very different. Uh, the population was a bit, was slightly older. Very many of them were above 35 and very many of them were in a position where they were now in management. So, uh, and they were also in a position to indulge their interests. And these are some of the things that we got. So this time there were more museum curators and archivists. So we had a lot of museums, art galleries, and curators. We actually had around six professional archaeologists, and they gave us that kind of information. And then there were those who are working with cultural leadership, and they told us more about their tra traditional leaders. We can move to the next slide. So these are some of the challenges that we experienced. There was blocking of IP addresses and user accounts. For the user accounts, it was a matter of uh, being overly enthusiastic and maybe naivety. But I like to think that this has been sorted. Though there was an incident that really made me wonder where somebody was told to write, I am sorry, 50 times. And then the blocking of IP addresses. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> And then there was lack of smart and suitable gadgets for learning. Somebody sends you a text message and they tell you what is a Zoom. I cannot see the Zoom. And you say, what gadget do you have? They're texting using a friend's phone and they have a Nokia 3310. And then we used Moodle for the learning platform. We offered orientation for Moodle. You know, this is how you use this system. This is how you submit the assignment. Even at the end of every live session, you know, we give you a demo of how to submit it. But still, there were challenges with using the learning platforms. And if you're planning on delivering an online course, I would really encourage you to invest in a learning management system for centralized management. There was familiarity from the community. Not everybody was a professional information worker. They were experienced editors from the Wikimedia community who had come in to see what is this all about? Is there anything new that I can learn? And they therefore imported 
some bad editing habits and this negatively affected others. And then there was lack of attention to detail, but that is universal. And then when it came to using some of the tools associated with uh, mass uploads of Wikidata, like the source MD tool, the editing thresholds were low, so people could not create things on the source MD tool because they were not auto-confirmed users. And then for between August and mid-September, the source MD tool just completely went down. And we were given reasons, but I think the one that we were told was updating of dependencies had not happened. So because there was a whole assignment related to using the source MD tool, very many people were paralyzed at that point. And then much as we work with information, there was limited awareness of the things that are around us, especially persistent identifiers, African researchers and research output. Next slide. And these were our general observations. Uh, the uptake was relatively easy because we were speaking to our colleagues in terms that they understand. They could relate them to the things that they do in the Wikidata context. And then we also noticed that there was um, a slight uptake in the use of related resources, especially the Wikipedia library, for those who met some thresholds even in Wikipedia and then there were differences in continuation when it comes to the nature of the students that we have. Um, most students in the Francophone community are at a point in there, they are much older. So they occupy administrative and managerial posts. So they are actually able to influence the policy in their institutions and also changes in programming in their institutions. They are able to give a directive to their staff to actually join these courses. And this is taken up. And then for the Anglophone community, they were relatively young and curious. And so there was a lot of grassroots engagement and community building. I see Sichele Sile here who's doing uh, glam activities in Zambia. And where is Ramatuli? She's just left here. Yeah? She actually nominated um, 15 people from the Gambia National Library Service. And they were the single, the, the single organization with the largest number of participants. And then I think Namibia also had a 100% pass rate. So they're building their communities. Uh, something that was very unfortunate to note is when the Wikimedia Foundation is talking about libraries, they are not telling you. But if you look through it, the, the emphasis is on academic libraries and their output. So public libraries and community libraries are being ignored in this conversation. And then the usual adage, familiarity breeds contempt. There was importation of poor editing habits. People would join the course to download course material and then use it to run concurrent engagements with their communities. They actually tune into the live session so they know what to deliver on the day that they are going to meet their communities. And yet we are going to release the information to them after that. Next slide, please. So here we are. Okay. <laughs> We are not at a crossroads right now as African information workers. We like to think that uh, the course was foundational and people may have identified their interests. There is something for everybody. You want to take uh, the programming route, take it. You want to take the Wikidata route, take it. You want to update uh, languages and labels, please take it. So we are not at a crossroads really, but we like to think that we have imparted enough for uh, people to be able to make an informed decision, especially for those who are going to be working with their communities. Thank you. Oh, here uh, you can check these for the course outline and all the course recordings for the live sessions are uploaded on YouTube and all the uh, as learning resources and you can access them via the meta page. Uh, we are going to be releasing that 
um, by the end of this month as part of the report, but uh, previous courses, the material has been is on the AFLIA website. We just haven't uploaded it on Meta, but even on the AFLIA website, it's free to download. And, uh, access to Moodle, so could you, can you only access the Moodle platform if you are part of your cohort? Yes. Okay, so it's, it's dedicated, it's a course. Yeah and they are registered participants for that particular course. That's where they receive their customized feedback. That's where assessment is done. That is where assignments are, are submitted. Yes. Question about the challenges slide. You mm -hmm. mentioned some challenges that uh, you cannot prepare for. For example, you cannot know in advance which of your students will pay attention to you, which is not. Mm -hmm. but there were other things that you could uh, control or, or select for in advance. We hope that uh, they'll be triggered to further action on that or know even the places, even absorbing them in the community where they can come for activities. And we know that there's a device for them. That's why when they're registering for these activities, we ask, do you have, and when they're Responding to somebody in the community, they are more truthful about it than when they're responding to the organization because for the organization, they do not want to be left behind or they think that I have to, It's I call it team finish the money. I paid subscription to Aflia. I have to finish this money. Any other questions? Because it's just not so any other questions that are very urgent? Wonderful. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.